about black bears breaking into homes, walking directly to the fridge, grasping some food and moving out again. Or think about elephants daily destroying rice fields in India, monkeys stealing food in Singapore, or wild boars suddenly crossing the road in the Netherlands. Conflicts between humans and wild animals occur all over the world and in fact are increasing. This raises the question of how to prevent human-animal conflicts by finding ways to live together. Most often wildlife management generally focuses on separating humans from wild animals as much as possible. Here we can think of confining wild problem animals to particular areas. But recently there is a tendency that wildlife managers and policymakers are starting to think about coexistence or cohabitation between humans and wild animals. Cohabitation means humans and wild animals learn how to share the same space. This means that wild animals have to be seen as participants in creating cohabitation strategies. So how does that look like? I have investigated two examples of dealing with human wildlife conflicts that show different strategies. First, black bear management on the Colorado Front Range of the Rocky Mountains in Colorado, the United States. And second, wild boar management at the Veluwe in the Netherlands. These cases revealed four important insights. First, the relationships between humans, wild animals and the landscape in which they interact are key in managing human wildlife conflicts. This might sound straightforward and logical, however, often the focus of management is on either humans or the wild animals that are involved in a particular conflict situation. So management should focus on their interactions to find solutions to achieve cohabitation. Second, designing and implementing cohabitation strategies means understanding communication between humans and wild animals through a variety of senses. For instance, sight is common for humans, but smell is common for many wild animals. Third, cohabitation strategies can be successful if they are based on principles of learning, remembering and adaptation. These processes are generated through the varied and repeated encounters between humans and wild animals. Fourth, to understand how humans and animals co-construct their interactions, wildlife managers and policymakers need to take both human and wild animal behavior into account. So when we take these four insights together, means that we need to redefine wildlife management from a process of acting upon wild animals to acting with wild animals. This also means shifting from merely managing wild animals or humans to managing how they interact. So to put such, such approaches into practice means developing what I call a multinatural approach, which means that managers need to develop dynamic and open-ended approaches that take into account ever-changing patterns of interaction between animals and humans. In fact, it implies the willingness to release full control over nature and that there is no one universal solution to manage human-wildlife interactions. So to put such an approach into action, conversations are needed among natural and social sciences, among scientists and practitioners, and among wildlife managers and volunteers. And in all these conversations, wild animals need to be understood as co-participants, not objects to be managed. Thank you for your attention.